Hi, welcome back to Forensics. Today we're going to look at Foremost, a fantastic command for recovering files, including deleted files from directories, partitions, devices, whatever it might be. So let's go in. It even works on some network captures, but there are better tools for that, like TCP extract. So let's go ahead and pop in and we're going to create a device. And we're over a demo directory right now. I'm going to do a low setup dash D just to be sure that nothing's there. And I'm going to do a mount grep MNT just to be sure nothing's mounted. So we're good with that. Now I'm going to create a device here. So I'm going to go ahead and everything in my demo directory, I'm going to wipe that out. And you can see that my demo directory is, is clear. That's all I want to say is I've prepped a demo directory and it is blank. That's all there is to it. So now let's go ahead and create a drive image. We're going to create a fake drive. So I'm going to do a DD input file equals dev zero. And we're going to do an output file and we'll do a dot slash disk.img. The count will make it 1024. And we'll do a block size of one megabyte, which will give us a one gig drive. So now we've got a one gig disk. We're going to go ahead and low setup that's loopback set up that device dash f means find the first first available number if you want to see what is currently there you can do an l and look at that i have nothing currently there but if i do an f and then i say disk img and then i do the low setup l you'll see that loop zero is now there now in this case i'm just gonna format this device i'm not going to create a partition i'm going to format it as if I just popped in a USB drive or something of that sort. So I'm going to type NKFS and I'll make it VFAT. And well, if you're wondering what your options are, you can type NKFS dot and do, do tab tab. And those are the built in systems I have on my computer. You should see the ones that you have on your system. If you are missing something, go ahead and do an app cache search and find whatever file system you're looking for and download it. So in this case, I'm going to do VFAT. If you're wondering what the options are for VFAT, for instance, sometimes it's capital L for the label and sometimes it's a lowercase n for the label. So you'll want to be sure that you pick the right one based on the uh, partition type you chose. In the, v, in the VFAT, you'll see that we're using a dash n for the label on EXT2, fourth version we use a capital L for the label. So right here, we'll go ahead and do the MKFS VFAT, we'll choose the N, and we'll call this demo, capital D-E-M-O, just like that. We don't need to do anything else with it. We can just leave all the other options there. We don't have to worry about fat size or hidden sectors or root directory entries or anything of that sort. We can just leave it just like that and tell it what we want to do, which is dev loop zero there we go uh, right there bam okay we got dev loop zero let's go ahead and make a directory which so we're going to make a directory right here and we'll call this our mounted and we'll type mount dev loop zero to mounted right there and if we look in the mounted directory, you can see that that is now there. If we want to see if it is mounted, you can type mount, grip, mounted, and you will see that we do have that right there, mounted from dev loop zero in the mounted directory. So we can put files there now. And so in, in this case, it's a one gig partition and if we want to create some images there or copy some images there, we can go through and copy images over to it. So I'm going to copy images. So I'll copy something from pictures. Um, let's copy it from home, Pete. Pictures, let's see, I got Geneva pictures, star, to dot slash, mounted right there. And I'll look at mounted, see if we got anything there. Okay, we got some stuff there. Um, yeah, looks good. Got a bunch of stuff there. Now, if we want some other documents in there, let's say some PDFs, we can go through and copy some PDFs, uh, documents, and we'll do star PDF to mount it here. And we have some PDFs in there then, uh, so we have that in the mounted directory. Let's go ahead and U-mount, mounted, 
And now that we've done that, we're going to low setup dash D, enter, then low setup dash L, and you'll see that we no longer have anything in the loopback setup after the dash capital D, which gets rid of everything. Lowercase d to get rid of individual mounts. Capital D gets rid of everything. So now we are left with a disk image. How do we cover files from this disk image? Well, in comes foremost. If you don't have foremost, of course you can do app get install, foremost, do a dash y, then you don't have to press y later on and press enter later on. So there's foremost. Now foremost has some pretty common features on there. There's in, indirect block detection. You can be verbose about it. You can uh, choose an input file. Uh, you can choose uh, be quick. Uh, there are a bunch of options on there. So let's go ahead and look at that. So over here, we can choose specify file type. What we're looking for, we don't know, so we're not going to do that. Turn on indirect block detection. That's good for Unix file systems. So we're not working with a Unix file system. We're working with a FAT32 system. So there we go. We don't have to worry about that. Specify input file, we will have to do that. So we will have to give it an input file, which is going to be our disk, our disk.img file. And over there with the write all headers, perform no error detection, corrupted files. This may be a good option for you. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because we created this file just now. It was all zeros. There's no corruption on this disk, unless there's some kind of weird physical corruption on, on my actual hardware which is not beyond oh, possibility. Okay, um, so we'll, we'll throw it in there. It won't hurt anything. Over here, only write the audit file. We don't want to do that unless you're doing something where you're just trying to see, is there information on the drive? Set the output directory. This over here defaults to the name output if you don't put anything there. So we're going to just not put anything. Let it go to output. This uh, set configuration file, we're not gonna mess with the configuration file. This is the quick mode, we're not gonna do quick mode. Quiet mode, we're not gonna do quiet mode. And verbose mode, we will be using verbose. So maximum verbosity on this. We'll do a foremost. Remember, we do not need the indirect block detection, so we can leave that off. We are gonna choose the V for being verbose, A for if you encounter any kind of corruption, I for choosing the image, or we use disk image, and then dash O, which will automatically output to the output directory. So we'll press enter on that. Oh, <laughs> and if, it, if you do this, then it's like, oh, it automatically puts the output. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, there we go. Now I'm getting a whole lot of bitmaps off of this, and a whole lot of exe files, probably bogus. Chances are they're not there, right? Bitmap is one of those compressionless images, so it's going to be hard to determine if it is or not. I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, PDFs on there, which we know that I did copy PDFs, so maybe they're legitimate, maybe they're not. We'll have to see. It's running through. You can kind of track the progress as it goes through. It's only a gig, so if you've got a fast system, you're running off an NVMe drive, a beefy enough computer, one gig shouldn't take any more than about 15 seconds. We are probably looking at about a minute here on this one because I am running a Core 2 Duo. Just almost as proof, you can run a Core 2 Duo as a hacking machine. Yeah. So we got that. Bunch of EXE files, which, you know, they're not. You can see they're all the same size too, 1024 KB. Go through this. Uh, we're actually gonna look at some of these files and I'll notice all the bitmaps are two megabytes a piece. Going through that. So let's go down to the bottom there. Okay, it's done. It says it got 2,285 files. That's what it found in there. 1,199 bitmap, 90 JPEG, 963 executables, 24 PNG, and nine PDFs. Well, where are they? Well, if you pop into the output directory, then you can see it create directories for each of the file types, which is outstanding. Now you can Nemo this and just go through and look at it inside of Nemo. And Nemo will allow you to just, you know, surf into each one of these and you can look at each one of these files. So you can pop in there and, and see what the output is on each one of those. And now I'm gonna go into EXEs there and I'm gonna show you something that we can look at when you're doing EXEs. So here from a forensic standpoint, 
Notice all of the exe files here are one megabyte. They're going to give me a whole bunch of one meg files. So if I do ll and I do a head on this, so it only shows me the top 10. I'm going to grab this first file here. And I'm going to take that first file and I'm going to do a hex dump. So hex dump dash capital C on this file. And I'm going to throw that through. And through this uh, head here and we're going to look at the the very top part of this exe file so as you look at the top of the exe file what we're going to find is that there is actually a mz at top of that file now there are no exe files in this disk image so we don't have any exe files they are all bogus but an mz the mz there at top of the file does denote a dos exe file so Foremost did find the MZ header there, and it tried to follow it through the entire file, and well, that's why we ended up with a whole bunch of one meg files there. But uh, that's a, a good call for, um, uh, I'll pop you in the comments there, for finding that that issue there um, on on that exe file. So that, I think that's, a, um, I'll have to look up the name, but I'll put it in the, the, uh, the, the comments down there for sure. But there it goes. So moving on, we can look through and the different types and you can see that this one's a PDF and looking at the PDF file, we can go through and see what the uh, the actual PDF is doing there. And you can look at the starts of the PDF and it's going to go on and we're going to end with an EOF. This So it goes through and finds this stuff and grabs it and then runs down to the end of it. Now if we look at the end of it, so let's go just a tail on this. Which did I pick a big file? I might have picked a big file. Uh, at the tail of this file, there is an EOF. That's an end of file statement. So in that case, it knows, which I'm talking foremost, knows that it was a PDF, it started at the percent PDF, and it ended at the percent EOF. So that's how it detects those files. Now we can look at some other files here. We can pop in and look at the PNGs and say, well, PNGs are a little different. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we'll grab one of these PNGs. Just grab that one. And we'll do a hex dump on this. And over here, we'll do the head dash 25 on that. If you look at the top of this, it's saying it's a PNG. Uh, I'm gonna pick a different file. And we're gonna look at the, the end of it. Let's go grab this one. Over there. And over here, it's got some interesting little notes on here. And it's got a, an I, N, B, those kind of things inside that file. We could go through and look at all the files like this. <clears throat> so we can feed each file in, do a tail, and we can look at the end of each file to see what kind of consistency you see you get in those files. That is it. Oh, hex dump. If you're not familiar with hex dump, hex dump, you can go, of course, download it or you can look at it. Hex dump allows you to dump a file in hexadecimal format. There are also hex editors out there, so you can actually change the hex dump file if need be. So that is that for using Foremost. All there is to it.